Oh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Catfish Farm Enterprise Life, Life YouTube session. So this is another session. We are having different classes on the live stream with different guests on the show. And today we are having someone from Ghana, and it is Afom Henny. Sorry if I didn't pronounce the name properly. Yes, I know a lot of cartridge farmer would a lot of cartridge farmer would know you. Yeah, if you are if you are into the cartridge farm industry and you're always on YouTube, you have come across one or two of his videos on YouTube. It has been very educative, it has been impactful. He has done a lot to educate a lot of persons in the ecosystem when they talk about aquaculture and also in agriculture as well. Now, all through his channel, we have different videos he has done, not just on the cartridge farm, in also all different areas in agriculture that can give you the basic need or the basic guide to start. So today is going to be taking us on a topic, the do's and the don'ts in cartridge farming. Now, knowledge is essential for everybody in any business you want to go into. Now, the adequate and the right knowledge is what everybody everyone need. Now, if you don't have the right knowledge or the adequate knowledge, you are prone to make mistakes. A lot of persons, they fail in cartridge farming, not because of there's no money, but the knowledge was not there. So we just have to bring him in. So yes, some people have joined the live stream now. Now the comment section is all yours. You can drop your questions. We'll find time to answer those questions. And also this video will be available after the live stream for you to watch still drop your questions and we'll still have time to attend to those questions. Now we are here for you to guide you so that you don't make some errors maybe we have made in the time past and so that you can have an ease-free journey. So without taking much of our time, I would hand over to Mr. Afom Hene to do a brief introduction about himself before we kick off for today. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's always um, a pleasure if you have yes. a fellow colleague farmer, a youthful colleague farmer as, yes. as, as, as that from another country reach out to you and say, hey, we are in this together. So let's try to educate our people about how yes. this business works. So I was very excited when you reached out. And I think going forward, this, that is what should be the way. Uh, it's, yes. it's not about Nigeria alone or about Ghana alone. It's Ghana. about both countries coming together Coming and together. linking our resources, our mm -hmm. talents together and making farming attractive to our youth. Because yes. if you look at the teaming youth that both countries have, Ghana and Nigeria, Nigeria. if we are able to create a platform where the, uh, the youth become interested in farming, it's going to solve a lot of the unemployment issues in most of these two countries. So yes. I hope that um, by sharing the little knowledge that we have, and by learning from each other, we can also encourage and inspire people to also get involved. So yes, my sir. name, as you rightly mentioned, is Afum Hene. It's Afum Hene. <laughs> Not Afum Hene. <laughs> Afum Hene. So yes, when, yes. when you come to our local language, Afum is farm. Okay. And then Hene is like a king. Wow. That means the farm king. Yes. So farm king or king of the farms. Because yeah. I, as I said, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of um, pull down that preconception that farming is for the old and the aged. People. Yes. And then the youth have no place in farming. No. Yes. It should be the other way around. Because as youth, we have energy, we have ideas, we have more vibe. That's can make farming more profitable to us. If you if you grow and you are old, you know, there's no there's energy. No strength. There's yes, no even energy if you have win. money, there's no strength. So I chose yes. this name because I wanted people to know that, look, I, I enjoy this thing. I like it. I want yes. people to invite you to also join me in farming. So that's how come I came by the name. So I'm also based in Ghana. And um, when I started... Catfish was not really my, my focus. I okay. started as a goat farmer. Wow. So I started rearing goats in commercial quantities. Then I, am, I was doing poultry too. I have ducks, I have okay. turkeys, I have some guinea fowl. And so that's what I basically started with. And that's where my, my initial focus was. Until I got interested in 
catfish through i mean the watching other videos and listening to people who are in the business and then going to their farms and seeing how yeah, they were doing we do. this thing. But, you know, in Ghana, catfish farming is not very popular. If you okay. come to Ghana, they have, you know, we wreck tilapia. The okay. kind of fish that is well domesticated is tilapia. Yeah. But wow. catfish, though we consume it, yes. mostly smoked, it is harvested from the river bodies and you know uh ponds okay in and, the wild yes from the wild so i mean when i learned about it i was like no this is a business that we can project to the youth and get them interested and that is how come i started the catfish business and so far so good i believe we are doing very very well and hopefully yes. uh, we've also encouraged other people to also get into the business and that is um how come i'm talking to you today another brother from nigeria and i believe people will learn from me yes that's nice so thank you very much for joining us to educate the youth in the farming now before they they, they see they see farming as something for the aj that you have said before but yeah. now there has been a reorientation about yeah. the farming now if you go online a lot of farmers you see today are the youth we know about the farm lady daniel and yeah. so many more persons, yeah. even the Fish Farm Academy, these are young persons going into the catfish farm business and different yeah. areas also. Not only the catfish, they have different areas they go also in the farming or agriculture sector. So without taking much of our time, we just have to go into the lecture we have for today, the do's and the don'ts of catfish farming. Yes, everybody okay. has to know the proper knowledge they need, the things they need to avoid so that they don't make some mistakes in the business. Yeah. So I would hand over to you to take us through the session. Okay, thank you. So what uh, we are going to treat today is basically the do's and the don'ts of catfish farming. There are some things that you must necessarily do to be successful in catfish farming. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that you cannot do at all. If you do um, any of those things, it means that you are setting up yourself to fail. Yes. And so, um, there are a lot of them, honestly, and we are talking about catfish in general. Yes. Look, we can even take a, a subtopic of the catfish farming and say the do's and the don'ts of the don't. feeding catfish, or yes. the do's and the don'ts of building a uh, construction, yes. and then we have a whole lecture on yes. that. So, if you make it a broad topic like the do's and the don'ts of catfish farming, it means that we cannot uh, exhaust, exhaust all it. of them. But in I'll focus on some key ones that uh, I want people to take um, notice of. So I'll start with the do, some few do, some things that if you want to ensure that you succeed in this business, that you must have some things that you must do. One, you must focus on training and expertise. Okay. Yes, we say catfish is not difficult to start. Yes, you don't need a lot of what? You don't need a lot of days. Comparatively, if you compare with other businesses, before you can enter into such businesses, you need a lot of training or you need a lot of um, um, orientation. Sure, but yes. when you come into catfish farming, it does not mean that you just hear about catfish and then you think that it is a water and fish business. Once you have water and then you put fish in the water, you are rearing catfish. No. You must basically learn on the job by learning, I mean you can go to an established catfish farmer and learn. Yes. Or you can um, get online training. I'm sure some of you, you do online training. Um, yes. Yes, myself, sometimes I do online training. I do training on my farm as well. So yes. what I mean is that you must get an expert to teach you the rudiments of this business. You can't just start and believe or think that everything will go well. So that is one thing that I believe that if you want to do catfish successfully, you must do getting training and expertise. It is yeah. very, very important. And you see that sometimes when people start, they do online training. I talked about online training. Yeah. But most of the time, online training alone is not enough. Yes, it's not the enough to just watch WhatsApp videos, or it is not enough to just go and sit in a classroom and then somebody will come with a board and try to teach you fish farming on the board. No. 
you must see the thing as it happens. So sometimes you might have to go to a farm where somebody is actually um, rearing catfish. Or you might have to sit down with somebody who really knows the business and can take you through the whole process. So you ask your questions and whatever that you want to do. So for me, training and expertise is very important. Yes. It's very, very important. And we cannot over or um, overemphasize on this particular point. So that is the first thing that as a catfish farmer, if you want to be successful, you must seek training and expertise. Training. Okay. So can I move on? Yes, sir. Good. So the next thing that every catfish farmer should do is to have a budget. Now, okay. I can expand it and say that you must have a business plan in place. Okay. You know, one thing that as youth we bring into this business is that we bring new ideas. We bring new yes. ways and modern ways of doing the business. So in the past, my mom was a farmer or is still a farmer. My mom would not calculate how much she's going to spend on maybe planting for a season. She would just, I mean, check that, oh, she has the seeds. And then just go and weed her farm and start yeah, planting. planting. No budget, no calculation whatsoever. Everything is in her head. Head. Yes. But this is the modern era. And as youth, we must do things the modern way. So before you start your catfish farm, you must have a budget of how much you are going to spend from the construction of the ponds, from the stocking of the finger. Fish. Can, can you hear me? I'm back online. Yeah, okay. I can hear. Yes, you are back now. Sorry, some 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 call interrupted my feed. Okay. Sorry about that. So as okay, I was saying, okay. So as I was saying, you 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 have to know how much is going to cost you to stock, how much is going to cost you to build your ponds, how much oh. is going to cost you to feed your fingerlings. Sometimes, how much is it going to cost you for your water management system? Mm. So all these things must be costed. At the end of the day, you must do your revenue projections and also see that even if I lose, say, 5 to 10% of my stock, and I have about 70% of my stock attaining 1 kg in, say, 5 months or 6 months, how much am I going to get if I sell all of them? Considering the price or the cost of or price of catfish in your locality <laughs> so you see this is the business side of catfish that most people overlook okay so you must know all these things plan it on a paper how are you going to change uh, you must have your um, water management schedule how <laughs> often are you going to change your water? water how often are you going to feed the part you see everything should be on paper well explained okay. so if you have set a budget and a business plan in place, note, cartridge farming is a bit capital intensive. Yes. Let us not deceive people that, oh, it is not capital intensive. If you have one pond and you get a few Naira or CDs, you can start. No. Let people come into the business prepared. Okay. We will try to explain, we will, we will simplify it for you. Let you understand that it is not as difficult as other forms of businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay. But don't think that you can get any small amount and come and start because at the end of the day, how much is a pond even going to cost you? Okay, so yeah. it is a bit capital in intensive because the expenses are continuous. Yes. If you look at this business, you are going to spend until you harvest. Even on the day of yes. harvesting, you will spend. Uh, you still spend for logistics. Okay, so that is that is what I mean by the continuous expenditure. You are going okay. to start construction, feeding, 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 until you get to the point where you are going to sell. And so it's a continuous expenditure. So people should come into this uh, business prepared. What I advise is this. You must make sure that at the end of your budgeting, 80% of the money that you use um, for this business mm -hmm. is ready and available. Okay. Pay my experience. 
Yeah. Uh, I always advise that if at the end of your budgeting, you realize that from start to finish, let's say you are going to need, say, a uh, hundred thousand naira. Okay. Yes. Eighty percent of that money should be ready and available with you before you proceed. Before you start, because you see, there's also this practice of oh, let me start as I continue, I'll get money to money and put into the them. business. Unfortunately, if you get stuck on the way, then your pro your, your project comes to naught because you can't get money to buy yeah. feed, and feed alone will cost you about seventy percent of your total expenditure. Yes. So uh, it is very important that as catfish farmers, we come in with a clear mind that we have our budget in place. We have about 80% or most part of the money available so that the 20% we can be saying that oh, we will work and find that money and then put it back into the uh, business. Yes. So that is the second thing that you must do as a catfish farmer. Please ensure that you have your budget or your business plan in place. That is going yes. to ensure that everything is well planned and everything is uh, uh, foreseen, you are not surprised on the way, so it discourages you to stop. So that is the second thing that I will say that as catfish farmers that we must do. Uh, the okay. third and final thing that I will touch on when it comes okay. to the do's is finding your market before you start. You know, I could have added the market okay. part to the business plan because, of course, if you draw a business plan. You should include in it your uh, market research. How are you going to sell your catfish? It should be part of your catfish, business plan. Yes. yes. But I am going to lay a lot of emphasis on this selling your um, fish. catfish. That is why I have detached it from the business plan. Mm -hmm. You know, in this catfish business, the, the, the okay. fish become ready for harvest before you know it. Trust me. Yes. Because we normally say that, oh, six months, if you do a good job, six months, the catfish will be ready. Yeah. You and I know that between four and five months, some of the catfish are ready to sell. Yes, yes. You get one kg by four months, some already one kg, five months, some already one kg. Good. And so when you start a business, five months is too quick a time. So you don't need to wait until the fifth month or the fourth month before you start looking at where am I going to sell this catfish. As a beginner or if you enter into the business, immediately you don't have customers because nobody knows that you have catfish. So it is up to you to, to, to put yourself yes. out there. Yes, yes. To let people know, to advertise yourself, to put it on the social media platforms and people ask, oh, how can I get market? Look, now everything is digital. So you put an ad on your status and people start calling you. Are they ready? Do you have some here or what yes. whatever? So you don't wait until the catfish is ready for harvest before you start looking for the market. As a matter of fact, immediately you start this business, you must start advertising. Let people know that you are dealing in catfish. In that way, before the market or before the catfish is ready, you have your market. So people are already calling you for catfish. You have you customers know, on ground. Yes, you must also know or your market research should tell you whether your market like their catfish smoked or fresh. It's also very important because in most places, they like it smoked or fresh. Some other people, they like it fresh. I know in Nigeria, you have a lot of recipes yes. that you use for yes. catfish. So you use catfish in preparing a lot of uh, yes. ready, uh, dishes, dishes. So you have a lot of recipes. In Ghana, yes. I mean, it's, it's now coming up. You have some new places, operating point and kill services and all okay. of that. So the fresh Thank catfish you. is coming up. But mostly, most Ghanaians enjoy their catfish smooth. So you must know this market dynamics too. It's very important. Okay, and in some of my videos, I talk about knowing when to sell your catfish. You know, in, in selling your catfish, there are some seasons that are bumper seasons. Yes. And catfish or fish in general is in abundance. And there are some seasons that catfish or fish in general is, is hard to come by or is scarce. So as a farmer, 
and you want if you want yes. to get the most out of your catfish you must be looking at the season where catfish is scarce to sell or where fish in general is scarce because at that season scarce, the prices of fish go, goes up so if you sell yes. you can get a lot of uh, money out of that so sometimes you might even have to delay or feed your catfish for a few more weeks so that you reach that scarcity period so as a business person or as a cast fish farmer, you must know these dyna uh, market dynamics yes. and fluctuations if you want to get the best out of your uh, business. Cut. So these are the three things that I would want to project to people that if you want to do a successful catfish farm, you must look at these things. You must get your training right. You must get your knowledge in the business right. Right. To you must get your budgeting and business plan in place. You must be up to um, point. And then finally, you must have your market ready even before you start. So these are the three things that you must do. We also will move into some of the things that you cannot do at all. But these are the three things that you must do. Uh, at this point, I don't know whether you want to add a, a few things or point out some things. Okay, I'll just point out some from the points you have made, then we'll ask them, okay, for at now, if you have any questions, you can drop it at the comment sessions for the do's you have mentioned before we go to the don't. So while we wait for the questions to come up, now you made mention about training, and you know, training is very important, and that's the key area. Now, like what we are doing today is still part of the training. So we are giving people the guide and the appropriate guide. So those in this live session are still getting trainings from this. Now, and you no know, training comes in different forms. The online training, the WhatsApp group training, the YouTube videos are also part of the trainings. And for the trainings, I tell people not just attending a WhatsApp training and you say you are ready to train the fishes. Now, there are some things the person teaching you will not see. There are some things you learn via observation. You go to the farm and you observe. Yeah. Now, the person teaching you might have not observed those stuff in his own farm. Now, take for example, your fishes might be behaving somehow. Now, all through my uh, period, I might not have observed it like that. But if you go to the farm, you observe yeah. those stuff. So going to the farm to get training is very essential for every farmer. Then you talk about a budgeting. Very important. Get an accurate budget about what you want to do in the business. So if there is no budget in place, you will just be doing it like the old people. That's why they didn't see catfish farming as something lucrative then, because yeah. they didn't know how much they were putting in. They didn't know how much they were getting. They were just doing it just for the sake of running something, not for profit. Yeah. Then you talk about finding your market. It's very, you can't talk, that one is very important. Yeah. Now, once you have the market in place, first you'll be you, they'll be calling you ah is your fish ready is your fish ready is your fish ready so you, at that time you can now make a decision on when to sell and yeah. how to sell definitely like here in nigeria like here in nigeria we have different sizes people buy there are people that buy the smoking size yeah the 300 grams to 500. 500 there are persons that buy the one kg sizes the table sizes and there are people that they just like 1.5 2 kg 2.5 kg those yeah. are the hotels and yeah. th those the hotels but they like the big, very big size so yeah. if you know your market very well you now know which sizes are you to sell am i yeah. to sell at 500 am i to sell at 1 kg or am i to sell at, at 2 kg or above 2 kg so these are very important points you have listed here so a lot of parents have been dropping their comments okay there are no questions for now it's just Thank you guys and just uh, compliments for what we have been putting up for this session. So I'll hand over to you to go on for the don't. If you more, we'll have maybe questions in between the session. Okay. Okay. So I will I will also talk about some things that for me I think you must not do at all. Okay. Um, if you want to succeed in this business. Many a times for and I speak for the youth. You see, you don't have enough capital to start this business already. But when you start this business, there are so many exciting departments that we call the value chain. That, in catfish. Yes, in catfish, that will excite you. 
So you go to the hatchery to buy and you see how their business is going and you're like, oh, so if I start my own hatchery, that will also benefit me. That is one. You go to the uh, store or the shop to buy your feed and you see how business is going on and you're excited. Hey, so if I grew the feed too, that will also help me. You go to where they smoke and how people are, market women are coming and buying. So you see, there, there's excitement in every department of the catfish trade. For the catfish. But that is not for you as a beginner. Okay? If you are starting yes. your business, it is not for you to get involved in every department mm -hmm. or in every aspect of the value chain. So yes. I say that don't start with all the value chain at once okay don't start with all of them at once if you are a millionaire or you have your money and you are starting and you want to build a hatchery and you want to get all these things in place it means that you are going to hire people with the technical expertise or technical know-how to work on them but for you and i who have to work our farms okay. ourselves with the knowledge and expertise that we gain on the daily basis. So, because most of us, we gain experiences on the job. Most of the things daily that we basis, have learned yes. are the experiences, the mistakes, and the successes that we have chalked on our farms. That is what gives yeah. us this experience so we can talk about them. But if you are starting afresh, you don't even know how to rear outgrowers. So you shouldn't tempt fries. Because it is going to fry. They are very delicate. Yes. So you see, set your priority right. Get your yes. your focus right. If you want to grow or you want to rear outgrowers, that is the focus. Learn on that. Master that. Have a good grasp of that. Before you think about um, venturing into feed production, sure. um, hatcheries, and smoking and trying to um, export and all of that. It is yeah. a process. So yeah. I always advise new farmers that please start from somewhere. Don't get too excited and now you spread yourself too thin. You are into hatchery, you are into this, you are into this, and you, you don't have enough knowledge in all of that. So it is very important that as a new or a fresh catfish farmer, you focus on one value chain master it, move on to the next. But if you try to get involved in all of these things, at the end of the day, you realize that you'll be, uh, what do they call it? Uh, jack uh, of all trade and master a jack of, of all trade, master of none. You get it? So yes. please, um, let's, let's, let's focus on what exactly we want to do. If it is a nursery or it is a hatchery you want to build, as a status, learn it well. Then start on and that. Focus on her then you move up to rearing the uh, fingerlings. Grow up. The grow out. Before you consider maybe producing your own feed. Because mm -hmm. if you try to do everything at once, you might fail. And if yes. you are failing, you will fail in all of them, which will yes. in turn discourage you, and then your investment would have been lost. So that is one thing you don't do. Don't start everything at once. The next thing I will talk about is let's don't start if you don't have any interest. Really, don't start okay. if you don't have any interest in fish farming. If yes. it is only about the money, you might fail. If you make only yes. the money your focus, have a genuine interest in fish farming. Okay? Or have a genuine interest in farming. Some people call me, they are like, look, a four minute. I have never stayed on a farm before. I don't have any experience in farming. In fact, I want to invest in catfish farming. And you know how they want to invest? They want to kind of give you the money so you do everything for them. And clearly, mm -hmm. such a person has no interest in farming itself. The only motivation here is the monetary returns that he thinks that he's Once going again. to get. But if you know the frustrations and the challenges in the catfish business, that is what strengthens you to make the profits. Okay? So have a genuine interest in this business. So don't start without the interest. Again, 
this point cannot be overstressed. Please, yes. don't start catfish business with only one pond. I keep on saying this because I'm getting a lot of experiences, especially in Ghana. Most people watch my videos, and when they call you, they are like, a four minutes. so you see, I have built one, my, my pond, a thousand capacity fish pond, so where can I get fingerlings? And it ah. is only one pond. They have no... Yeah. I mean, they have yeah, no... Yeah, we to. How are you going to sort? Okay. So it is, it is, it is a point that I, I, I want to be keen on. Don't start with only one pond because when we say a thousand capacity fish pond, it does not mean thousand capacity from start to finish. Okay? It means yeah. a thousand capacity of the same sizes. Sizes. So if you start with a thousand capacity fish pond and you have only one and you stock, with, stock it with a thousand fish pond, a, a thousand fishes or fingerlings, yeah. you are going to fail because there will be no place to sort. And most of your fishes will have stunted growth. They will not grow well. Most of them will also go, are also going to die due to cannibalism. Okay, so please, cannibalism. don't, yes, don't start with only one pond. It will not help. And again, one thing that catfish farmers cannot afford to do is to be an absentee farmer. You cannot yeah. be an absentee farmer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in yeah, farming, yeah. In general farming, whether it is crop or animal, you cannot afford to be um, an absentee farmer. But in, in catfish in particular, the challenge is heightened because, you see, even if you have money and you can hire the best people to work on the farm, chances are that most of your workers have also have catfish farms. Yes. So if you are not there, your feed will be feeding your catfish in the morning and their and catfish their own, in the evening. In the night. So by the time you realize you have pumped in so much money, but your catfish do not look the size or the quantity of feed that you think you have given them. Given them. So it is very important that you are present on your farm. Can you imagine uh, operating a hatchery and then you are not on the farm yourself? Wow, that's bad. It will not be possible because you see, these yeah. are fries. They need constant attention. Okay. And if you are not there and you think you can just call your people up to work on it effectively for you, I'm sorry, but you might not get the results that you want. So, yeah. in cartridge farming, you cannot be an absentee farmer. You need to be a participating and a very active farmer on your farm. It is, it is not always that you can stay on your farm. Okay, so I have a video that I did about farming as a side hustle, trying to yeah. encourage youth who have jobs already to mm. kind of farming add food. farming, whatever form of farming, to the business that they do. And I talk about this that look, you cannot be an absentee farmer. It does not also mean that you can stay on your farm because you work already. Farm every but day. you must be a consistent um consistently present on your farm at some particular times. So you can say that maybe in a week, I'll be on my farm two times or three times. That should not fail. You must be there. In fact, sometimes you must throw in some um, surprise visit to your own farm to see whether the people you have on your farm are doing the job as you want them to do it. Yeah. So once in a farm, I will go to my farm unannounced because they know that I normally come there maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. Oh, but yes. once in a while, I'll go there on a Sunday or I'll go there on a Monday unannounced to see whether when I'm not there, they are doing things as they should do it. So yes. you cannot afford to be an absentee farmer if you want to be successful in catfish farming. The last thing that I want to touch on in the don'ts, the things that you cannot do as a catfish farmer, is you cannot use or you you don't have to use poor quality feed and cheap okay. feed in the name of cutting costs. Cost. A lot of farmers have failed because they thought they were cutting corners 
and then they are trying to reduce the cost of their feed so they will go in for you know cheap feed and poor quality and not feeding the cat all the wrongs that you can do in feeding catfish and i'm sure uh, most of us have videos on the proper way of feeding catfish yes so yes. you cannot afford because you see feeding your catfish right accounts for the majority percentage of your success if you succeed yes. in catfish feeding your catfish right is one of the things that you can if you get right you are on your way to success so definitely you cannot afford to use poor quality feed cheap feed <laughs> that it does not mean that if it is cheap it is not good no it can be cheap and good but sometimes most of the cheap feed on the market are not good because yes. now as i said earlier you have a lot of people who get into the business and they want to do everything at once so well, they watch a youtube video about how to produce your own feed now yes. they can buy the pellet machine from china they get it in and then they want to produce their own feed and sell to you this person has not even read catfish before and they want to yes. sell you the feed of catfish yes. you get yes. it so it yes. is very important that you know where you're, you're buying your feed from whether it is from a quality source a trusted source before you can say that, oh, you have a good quality feed that you are giving to your um, fishes. So, um, my brother, all in all, these are, in my view, some of the major do's and don'ts in catfish farming that as catfish farmers, we must do or not do to succeed in this business. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much, you would covered almost all the areas in cartridge farming now with this point yes we talked about we've discussed about the do's and now the don'ts in the catfish farm business so we've talked about don't start if you don't have the more or all the value chain at one don't start all the value chain at one now there's a video i did recently about the different value chain in catfish farm business okay explain the, the i explained the different value chain Okay. So that anybody that wants to go into the cartridge farm business has an understanding that, yes, this value chain are different. Yeah. Now, I've got a lot of calls, and you see somebody, this is just his first fishes, and I tell you, ah, feed is expensive, I want to produce my own feed. Yeah. Teach us how to produce our own feed. I know maybe you have gotten some of those kind of calls. Hey, and say, ah, ah, I, need, I want to start producing my own feed. And I'll tell you, don't produce, buy. Yeah. Most of us, we buy feed, we don't produce yeah. for ourselves. Now, there are reasons why you buy, your, you buy the feed. Now, you have vetted this company and you know that, yes, they, they use the right quality to produce. Yeah. Now, for you to produce your own feed, you might not have the proper raw material to give a good and quality feed. Because yeah. if, you, if, you, if you are good in the cattle farm business or if you have been here for a while, you understand that feeding is the major, one of the major things in cattle farming. If you yeah. get your feeding wrongly, even if your pond is big, even if your water is neat, but your feed are bad feeds, your fishes will not get weight, they won't grow well. You don't, you at the end of the day, you have lost a lot of investment in the business. Yeah. So don't just go into the value chain and want to do everything. Now, in that video, I talked about each value chain has its own advantages, has its own disadvantages. Yeah. Now, I, the, when I started Cashfish Farm New, I went to a lady that does hashray. Now, and in her farm, you see a lot of fishes, fries, fingerlings, and she's selling. You'll be like, wow, this woman is making a lot of money from this business. But when she tells you that, ah, this is the third time I, I just hatched. The first one, I lost all. The second one, I lost all. The, the third one, I lost though. This is the one that just succeeded. And this is somebody that's been doing it for a long time. So imagine she's still having errors, still losing fishes. So but for you, you just see she's selling and you feel she's making money. There are still yeah. some challenges they face. They might not tell you, but they face challenges in the hash. So know the area you want to go into. I tell you farmers, start with the grow out. If you can do the grow out perfectly well, you can now say, okay, you want to go to different areas in the yeah. cartridge farm value chain. Yes, you can start with the grow out first. It's a bit not that technical as when it comes to the hash rate. Or even the yeah. feed production those ones are a bit very technical to do then also you talk about the interest having the interest you know one thing about any business interest or the passion will keep you going 
without the right passion, you get you get tired on the way. Yeah. Now, I know you have been in different, you have done different areas in agriculture, and I know you have encountered some challenges in these different areas. Yeah. Now, if there is no passion, you would have stopped. Long time. Long time, because sometimes you might, like there was a time I stocked some fishes, followed the, all the procedures, and I just woke up one day and I saw that somebody else dying. It was saying, what, you try, you checked, and you did everything right, and these fishes are dying. So if somebody that does not have the passion, after you just encounter those losses, you just pack up and say you're not doing it again and you want to go. Yeah. But you know, you want to have the passion, it will keep you going. You know, that, yes, maybe I made some mistakes and I'll readjust and get it right the next time. Yeah. Then the third one, you talk about don't start with only one pond. Like you said, I want to start 1,000, I get 1,000 pond capacity. It can't work like that. I, I tell you, I tell you, instead of buying 1,000 pond, you can buy two 500, 500 and 500 capacity. Yeah. Now, don't stock 1,000 fishes. You can stock 500 for a start. Then you, so when the time comes for sorting, you sort them. Now, it's better your pond is big. That means yeah. you, you are understocking the pond. It's better like that than overstocking your pond. Yeah. So once you understock the pond, they won't grow better. They feed better. You, you don't really have stunted growth in the fishes. Then once yeah. you overstock them and there's no way to sort, you'll be encountering cannibalism. Some will not even grow. It's when you're not start having one kg fish in one pond and you're still having 100 grams in the same pond. Yeah. Because one... Some are not eating. They can't face the competition when it comes to eating. eating. Yeah. Yes. And you talk about the last time, don't be an absentee farmer. Yes. Because you need observation. To, you need to observe what you are doing in your fishes. You need to observe them properly. So you don't mean that you must sleep in the pond or sleep in the, in the farm. You can go there from time to time to observe them and see how they fare. And the top, fifth one you mentioned about the poor feeding quality. Yes. As humans, as we are, now if you don't eat the right food, you won't grow away. Yeah. We know we know we talk about washok war and different deficiencies children face. Yeah. Now this is because when they were tender, they didn't give them the right feeding that has the right proportion. Now it's of not just tricks. giving yes, it's not just giving fishes food. So some people feel that somebody has asked me, can I give my fishes biscuits? Can I give them biscuits to eat? Can I give them bread to eat? People ask sort of those questions. And I tell you, you can give them to eat, but they won't grow. That's just the truth about the matter. Because if they take biscuits, they take bread. Now, this biscuit and bread does not contain all the right proportion the fish needs. Yeah. So they might be eating it, but you see your fishes, they are, either they are getting stunted or they are not growing well. So all the right nutrients need to be available. And especially when they are very little, from the fries to the fingerling to the juvenile. At this stage, they are feeding, you must get the appropriate type of feed. You don't just give them any how feed. Yeah. Now, when they are matured at one kg, at that stage, if you give them anything, they will eat. Yeah. Because they have matured. Like an adult, now, if you want to give you anything, you just eat. You are not really feed it. For a child, if you don't give them the right food, you are definitely going for a crash. So that's critical point you have made mention it has been a wonderful session. I know a lot of a lot of persons have learned a lot from this point. And like you said earlier, we can't really exhaust all the do's and the don'ts in cartridge farming. It's more, it's enormous. There are a lot of do's, there are a lot of don'ts with you shouldn't delve into when you are going to the cartridge farm business, from pond construction, from feeding techniques. Now, even the size of the feeding, you don't just carry yeah. three kg feed to be giving yeah. finger lengths. They will eat. Yeah. So yeah. there are a lot of areas, it's a broad areas, and I know subsequently, that's why we have the YouTube channel, and we post regularly on the channel, because yeah. the, these things, we can't really exhaust them, most of in this, our live sessions, or even in one video, you can't talk about everything, even in yeah. one video, even if they give you three hours to talk about catfish, you can't talk, because we learn every day. You go to your farm today, you see something new, you learn from it, the next day you learn something new again, so we learn on a daily basis as we interact as we observe our fishes. So new techniques are coming. So one thing I tell farmers, be open-minded, be open to learn. You, you can't know all. That's not the truth. You can't, you can never know all when it comes to cartridge and business. We learn every day. That's why we bring synergies from different farmers, even different persons online. Now I know about a farm lady, we work together. 
we are doing a live session with you today from Ghana and different other persons that are in the aqua culture ecosystem. So once yeah. you work together, you rub minds, you learn from here, you learn from here, and the business is going forward and people are getting imparted and people are getting interest to join the business. So thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate for having us or joining us in this live session. I know we'll still be having you subsequently in our sessions as time goes on because it's not just a one-off something, it's something we'll do progressively. And I know the Tartishan business will be growing in leaps and bounds in Nigeria and also in Ghana and also other countries in Africa. Now, the youth have the number, they have the strength. So come together. Now, if people see the youth doing it, they will be inspired to do it. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of persons have seen your videos and they are inspired to do farming because they have seen you do it, do it and they have yeah. seen it being successful. So have yeah. the interest to do it. So we really appreciate the work and the efforts you have been putting in, in your channel and for the people of Ghana, and not only Ghana, even Nigeria and other places. Because people watching your videos, are, if you check your channel, you know that your audience are not just in your country. They are all over the world. They are different yeah. audiences learning from and getting imparted from the work you are putting up there. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. I don't know whether you thank have... You, thank you. Thank you, too, for it. having me. I, I just um, like the collaboration that um, we are having. So I'll just urge, I mean... All of us, Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, Zambia, every African country, let us collaborate more. Because if we share yeah. ideas, because you see, in Nigeria, I always tell people, Nigeria is like the headquarters of catfish farming. Yeah. So if you have somebody in Nigeria collaborating with you, sharing ideas with you, then you see that you are getting the right information for your community or your audience. Yeah. And that is what I want us to continue doing so i also i mean i mean create such discussion sessions where i'm also going to invite you the farm lady um um uh, senior brother um the catfish uh, academy. academy i mean uh, fish academy and everybody so that we can yes. learn from each other because i believe that you yes. see the sky the sky is is, is too big for all of us to succeed everybody can succeed yes. we don't need yes. to have only nigerians succeeding or only Ghanaians succeeding Ghana we can all good. succeed as brothers and sisters in this business so let's keep the collaboration going let's keep um sharing ideas to educate more people and to motivate more people to get into the business so thank you for having me and then uh, god bless you i'll be looking forward to more collaborations in the future Okay, thank you very much. So thank you, make brother. this happen, yes. And this this will not be the last time we'll be having this. It's a continuous process, and we'll see maybe in time to come. We might have more than one person joining us. We might just definitely, we've been working definitely. on having like four it'll be, it'll be persons. Fun to have all of us yes. in, on, on one discussion so we can take questions and answers. Yes, okay. yes. We'll, we'll work on that. I will talk with the family lady and different persons. We'll work on okay. work on a time where we can have more persons joining, and we'll yes, just definitely. share the ideas and discuss. And see us going further. So thank you again for joining us thank for this you, bro. Thank you, bro. It has been impactful. Thank you. And God bless. My Have a wonderful day, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Welcome to Foam TV. My name is Foam Green. Hello, guys. Welcome back to Catfish Farm Enterprise. Now, this is your number one channel for Catfish Farm. So thank you everybody for joining us in the session today. No, it has been a wonderful session having you guys online. Now it's a brief session that just lasted, but very soon we are going to be having more of this subsequently. So we are going to be having our guests next by next week, hopefully by next week, the details will be made available for the next guest that is going to be joining us. And subsequently, we are going to have persons joining us for the live stream. So for those that we are not able to take their questions, the, the video will, will be available on the channel shortly. You can go through, watch the video, ask your questions, and definitely we are going to be reaching out to you, addressing your questions. 
Now, our WhatsApp number are also in the channel. You can send a WhatsApp message to us. We can attend to any of your needs when it comes to the Cartesian business. And we are here to serve you, and we are here to make the business better and bigger. So have a wonderful weekend, and stay blessed.